Welcome back to another Buckeye Game Reaction. Week 12 as Ohio State throttles Minnesota in their final tune-up game. Senior night, 37-3, the final score in Columbus. Although, it didn't quite get to that dominant position in the game immediately. Although, it kind of looked like that it would with a pretty smooth first drive for the Buckeyes that ended with a Travion Henderson touchdown run. Henderson had a fantastic night overall going for 146 yards on 15 carries and two touchdowns. Uh, but then after that, you know, Minnesota able to flip the field a couple of times and the ensuing Buckeye drives, the one that would end in points, only resulting in field goals. The silver lining there is that uh, I did come out of this game feeling a little bit more confident in Jaden Fielding after, after this one where I did get to actually see him hit some kicks from distance. So I'm, I don't think he's a complete liability in, in terms of half, in terms of making field goals now, but it, you, you definitely would rather finish off some of these drives in the first half with a bit more points. In that second quarter, the passing offense did falter a little bit, especially on the opposite side of the 50, where you did have some inconsistency, inconsistency issues with Kyle McCord still showing itself. Nothing I thought that was too terrible, but again, when it is Ohio State and you are kind of peeking your eye at what you're going to be playing against this coming week, it, a lot a lot of the expectations are going to be this is going to be, this is going to be it has to be good, it has to be functioning and in the second quarter in the first half it was a little bit start stop and start for the passing offense especially uh in fact right before halftime Kyle McCord got sacked and he came up limping uh which at that point could have meant disaster especially considering again considering what what this coming week is playing Michigan and if you're you're going into Ann Arbor with with a gimpy quarterback that's definitely not what you want to to see but you know, fortunately for Ohio State, he did come back out in the second half and appeared to be fine. It seemed like he was more just kind of in pain than injured. I guess that is something we can monitor as the week goes on, but it, there didn't seem to be any sort of uh, lingering effects uh, after the halftime after the halftime break. Uh, but at halftime, it did seem to have all the makings of the game that really shouldn't be as close as it is, but it kind of is because at halftime it was just 13 to nothing, and the offense was kind of iffy but the defense was still solid but I mean they were going up against Minnesota's offense which I, I mean I'm, I'm not really scared of Minnesota's offense even if Ohio State wasn't rocking with w rocking with the defense they that they've had this year but even with, with Ohio State's defense you knew Minnesota wasn't really going to be putting much of any points on the board uh, but you know the game really started to open up at really in the first play of the third quarter when Trayvon Henderson broke off a 75 yard touchdown run for his second touchdown of the game and that made it 20 to nothing and again the floodgates really opened for the Buckeyes in that third quarter uh, you had Marvin Harrison Jr. getting a Short touchdown reception off of a slant route that he ran in one-on-one -on -one coverage in the end zone. Uh, defender had no chance to cover that slant route on, on that play. Uh, all the while, again, like I mentioned, the defense not allowing any sort of offensive momentum from the Golden Gophers. Not only were they limiting Minnesota's offense to uh, very few consistent play, in, in, plays in terms of getting yards, they were also elevating the Buckeyes offense by creating turnovers and setting Ohio State up in really good field position. Uh, one of the first turnover was a Jack Sawyer strip sack that was recovered by JTT. That's what set up the Marvin Harrison Jr. touchdown that I mentioned earlier on the slant route. And then in the next drive for Minnesota, Jordan Hancock getting an interception, followed by what felt like the entire defense getting hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct for posing, which, I, I mean, the, the penalty didn't obviously do much of anything. It did drive Ohio State back a some yards, but nobody ended up getting a second unsportsmanlike for an ejection, but it was kind of funny hearing the referee list off number after number after number, basically everyone who was doing the the uh, end zone celebration with, with Hancock after he got that interception. Uh, but that interception did lead to a field goal, making it 30 to nothing. Uh, so the Buckeye starters, uh, at least on offense, they finished the day by executing a long drive, ending with Cade Stover receiving a one-yard touchdown grab, 37 nothing, and that's officially when we've entered garbage time at that point. Pretty much all the starters are pulled. Anyone that could have any impact for the Michigan game, you don't want to risk them getting injured when, when the game is pretty much put to rest and the score is already ridiculous. You had uh, Lincoln Keenholz taking over once again late at the quarterback position. And you know what? Minnesota's kicker made a very impressive 54-yard field goal to get the Golden Gophers on the board. You would much rather see a goose egg up there. It's kind of cool to say that you know the defense pitched a shutout. But you do have to give credit where credit is due for a really good kick by Minnesota's kicker. Uh, and that's how we land at the final score of 37-3. So a really nice second half for the Buckeyes. But, you know, next week they do have a tougher task that they've been playing the last couple weeks where it's been cupcakes at home. Now you're going on the road to what's going to be, what 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 is always going to be a very hostile 
territory in Michigan and, and Ann Arbor, but especially with the kind of team they have up there and the angst that the fan base is in because of the off the field stuff, that is definitely going to be a wild, wild environment for the Buckeyes to play in. And look, if, if the Buckeyes, if, if, we, if we get the second half Buckeyes of this game, then that, that game's going to be cooking with gas. But if we get what we saw with in the first half of some inconsistencies and, and the offense isn't necessarily going and, the, and they're really relying on that defense to uh, keep the game close and Michigan comes out playing their best football, it could get in a perilous situation quickly. And for Ohio State, in my opinion, the playoffs start now for this team. As if, you know, if they lose this next week, not only is it going to be just three straight losses to your biggest rival, and that's embarrassing enough, but it, in my opinion, there, there's no way they're going to be falling ass backwards into the playoffs once again if they lose to Michigan like they did last season. I think if they lose to Michigan, Ohio State's going to be on the outside looking in come the final rankings. I think that's the stakes that we're dealing with here, and that's why I say the playoffs start this week because I feel like Pretty much every game Ohio State plays from here on out is going to be much win, must win. If they get it done against Michigan, then that Big Ten Championship game, you can't lose against Iowa and still expect to make the college football playoffs. You can, and then once you're in the, if you if you make the playoffs, obviously you can't lose any of those games either. So starting this week, Ohio State is pretty much going to have to be in playoff mode. But that's just how I view it. You can let me know what you think about uh, this next week and how things could go down in the comments section below thank you for watching if you didn't make it this far feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more like it i do cover a lot of sports teams in ohio that i like you might like them as well but once again thank you for watching i will see you at the next one